sometimes I sit down and I think about it, like, I'm actually the fastest man in the world. I can see people, I say, you know what, I can beat you. I can beat you. I can beat you. I definitely can beat you. <laughs> so, so, yeah, yeah. It's fun. It's always a once in a lifetime occurrence for an athlete to come to the world stage and take a sport by storm. Be it the likes of Jesse Owens or Carl Lewis, Michael Jordan or LeBron James, or someone like Muhammad Ali or even Michael Phelps. But let's talk about a man who literally used to break records for a day job. And that, folks, is Usain Bolt. The guy who holds records in the 100-meter, 200-meter, and 4x100-meter relay in sprinting, and is often credited as the greatest in the world. And while the world has been searching for its next Usain Bolt ever since the legend himself hung up his boots, we've come closest to finding two such stars in 2023. And despite their age gap, they're both neck and neck in challenging for glory. We're referring to the prodigal 19-year-old Irian Knighton and the 26-year-old Noah Lyles. But, but, but keeping aside their personal comparisons, let's focus a little more on Lyles and how his journey to actually become the fastest American over a 200-meter course and becoming the third fastest sprinter in the world led him to prominence and why he, often compared to the likes of Usain Bolt, is the target on the dartboard for multiple NBA players and celebs in 2023. So why does the NBA hate Noah Lyles? That's what we're going to find out in this video. Now, one thing's for certain. The rise of Noah Lyles hasn't gone unnoticed. The man holds a national record of 19.31 seconds in the 200-meter sprint, making it the third fastest time achieved in the world behind Usain Bolt and Johan Blake. And he also holds the second fastest time achieved in the world for 100-meter relay with 37.10 seconds with the United States national team. Given his age, he could surely aim to break the record and perhaps officially cement himself as the fastest man alive. And with his exploits at the 2023 World Athletics Championship, it doesn't look impossible either, since he has won the gold medal again in all three major categories with some astonishing timings, especially running the 100 meter in 9.83 seconds, which is also his personal best. So why is he a wanted man among some of the NBA fans and players, and even celebrities? Well, let's find out. Noah Lyles recently made headlines by stirring the pot quite vigorously when he quite expressly pointed out that the NBA champions aren't world champions. And for more context, here's his full quote. Is that I have to watch the NBA finals and they have world champion on their head. World champion of what? The United States? Don't get me wrong, I love the US at times. <laughs> but that ain't the world. That is not the world. We are the world. We have almost every country out here fighting, thriving, putting on their flag to show that they are represented. Yeah, Noah pissed off some NBA players and the basketball community overall, which perhaps also included some experts. And it wasn't long that his quote was discussed on shows, Twitter, now X, and podcasts as well to actually debate about the fact that he was, right? Is the NBA really just a US-based league? And why is it that NBA champions are called champions of the world when no other international team plays in the tournament? Is the inclusion of players from foreign leagues enough criteria for the NBA to be considered a global league? Then why does the Euro League exist if the NBA is a global league on its own? All these questions came with some massive outrage, some in support, some against Noah, some trolling him, some mocking him, and some actually seeing the sense of it all. And while some NBA players may have been trying to chase Noah Lyles with pitchforks, we can safely say that they won't be able to catch him either, because as long as we're on the subject, Take a look at how someone as fast as Usain Bolt compares to perhaps the fastest ever players recorded on a three-quarter court sprint, which is usually 22.86 meters. And after doing some math, he beats almost all players comfortably. And if a similar methodology was applied to Noah Lyles, one can safely say that he would perhaps beat most, if not all of them too. But it gets a tad bit interesting since NBA player Cookie Belcher is reported to have run a three-quarter court sprint in 2.91 seconds. So how do we know for sure? Well, for this, we also need to account for the fact that while these NBA players run on a wooden court with basketball shoes on, the metrics aren't completely fair, but rather a hypothetical extraction of data from the actual sprinting records of athletes. And also, the basketball players never really do run for 100 meters in general, so who's to say that they'd actually beat these sprinters? Now, coming back to what Noah said, it's important to understand how there is, after all, some sense to the matter. Despite the outrage of the fans and the mocking of the NBA community, 
the NBA, much like the MLB or the NFL or the NHL, is not a global league, and it's predominantly played only in the U.S., with just one team from Canada, the Toronto Raptors. So does it truly make it a global league? Because even if we compare it to European football, otherwise called soccer in the United States, the winner of all continental tournaments actually compete in the Club World Cup, where the winner of said tournament is informally considered a world champion, and that is for a good reason. But let's take a look at what other analysts like Stephen A. Smith had to say as a knee-jerk reaction to Noah Lyles. The NBA has established itself as a global iconic brand. You've got guys from Serbia, Slovenia, you know, the list goes on on Luka Doncic. Where's he from? All right, Giannis Antetokounmpo, where's he from? Greece. I'm looking at the number right here. According to a news release posted just last, last October, the NBA currently features 120 players from 40 countries and six continents on its roster. The best players from around the world descend upon America to join the National Basketball Association. And that also raises an important question again. Is the sheer inclusion of a certain number of foreign players and their meteoric rise in a nationally driven league enough to call the NBA a global brand? And if representation is the only metric, why is there no NBA team named after any city or town which is outside of the US? And as much as we appreciate Aaron Gordon's confidence, we really find it hard to believe he'd be able to beat the third fastest man in the world in a 200 meter sprint, despite having a vertical for the ages. Eating in that mascot. And while Stephen A. Smith was perhaps one of the most vocal celebrities about the issue on his show First Take, it took some education on his side as well to actually understand what Noah Lyles actually was referring to, thus corroborating the same questions that we pose in this video. The first being the inclusion of players from abroad competing for a title, rather than the same players representing their countries in a tournament. And secondly, the fact that no other global sports brand calls itself a global league, Take, for example, Premier League in England or La Liga in Spain. And what do you know? Stephen A. Smith actually apologized to Noah Lyles. Stephen A. released a video which was titled, He Was Right, I Was Wrong. And in that video, he very candidly spoke about the fact how he was quote unquote educated on the matter by one of his close friends, Boris Kojo, and offered an explanation on the matter. Let us know what you think about Stephen A.'s comments before and after the incident, but take a look at his video first. World championships are global competitions in which individuals and or teams representing their respective countries compete for a world title. Examples, FIFA World Cup, FIBA World Cup, etc. Just because teams compete in the best leagues in the world doesn't make them world champions. The FIBA World Cup will crown a world champion in the next few weeks, and that title will go to a deserving team comprised of players of the same nationality representing their country. That makes Noah Lyles right. Well... That really escalated and ended quickly, didn't it? And as much as we might criticize what Noah Lyles said or the way he said it, we think it goes without saying that he did have some profound thought to it, and it perhaps even needed to be said. Because till what extent do we continue to operate with the idea of the NBA being a global league? Because if it were to be, it would require participation on a country-based criteria, or even if it were to do it as a continental tournament like the Club World Cup, it would have to enter into a separate competition with other continental league winners across the world and then fight it out for the world champion tag. Noah Lyles lit a fire under some asses, and people are taking note of it. And here's what the man of the hour had to say when he was asked about his thoughts on the kind of reactions and responses he's been getting from the NBA community. To be honest, I'm just glad that we're having the conversation. <laughs> you know, it's been a, a, an underline for so long, but nobody really wanted to talk about it. And, you know, with everybody actually saying things about it, now you have dialogue. And of course, you know, maybe there'll be opinions that change and maybe there won't, but at least we're having the conversation. And there you have it. The purpose was achieved, and, well, it's got people talking. And while this chatter will perhaps continue to the near future as well, we've come to the end of this video, and we'd love to hear your thoughts on it too. So let us know in the comments section. Was Noah Lyles right? Is the NBA community's saltiness towards his comments justified? And while you're at it, do like this video and subscribe to our channel for more such interesting content, and we'll see you in the next one.